Hey, this is Jack from VCO Farm. I was just going to do a quick walkthrough of some of the projects I'm working on. There's the chicken coop, sometimes referred to as the chicken palace. Over here is the uh, former site of the aquaponics system. I started tearing that down to move it. There in the background is our small hoop house and workshop. Over here is the chicken yard we've been working on. This whole area used to be the garden, but over time I realized it was not a great garden spot because of all these tall trees, too much shade. So we're doing some things to relocate some of the garden plots to different areas. Uh, these are the kiwi vines. Of course, it's February, so there are no leaves, but over here are the girls. This is the chicken run. There's the little door where they can get out into the yard and this is the scene of our tragedy last year where I allowed them out a little too much and a hawk killed five of them. So what I've been trying to do here is give them access to more area. We, we just have too many predators here to free range. None of them would survive. But I wanted to give them a lot of room to roam so i've taken the old garden area and have put six or eight feet of fencing and then this this uh web of wire up here is actually to serve two purposes one will be so the kiwi vines can climb out on the wires and get more room to spread out and also protect from aerial predators so and I'll, in the summer, when it's so hot, the kiwi vines will have leaves and the chickens will get more shade. In the winter, when it's colder, they won't. They won't be uh, shaded, so they'll get more sun. That's, that's uh, I think, good function stacking. So this whole area is going to become beneficial to the chickens they'll be able to do things to improve the soil that if we ever decide to put any garden beds back in here we could but the kiwi vines protect the chickens and of course the chickens should should contribute to building the soil in the area around the roots of the kiwi vines this area is large enough that we're going to be able to divide it into two areas and do a little bit of paddock shifting so we'll only allow the chickens in half of it at a time over there where the door out of their run is i'll put a second door in and then about halfway down i'm going to run a a uh, movable fence down here the intent is they'll only get in one half of it at a time and before they just wipe everything out i'll shift them over to the other side and let one side have a chance to recover and over time if they're too much for it and they overwhelm both sides we'll have to just not let them out all the time or or eventually maybe expand the area but i'm hoping with only 13 chickens that that this is enough to provide them with some some good nutrition and still allow the areas to recover so we've already overseeded this with several things like a lot of clover, uh, some borage, uh, some fava beans, just a bunch of old cover crops that I had left o seeds left over from. These dirt piles are actually the, the better s uh, soil that we took out of the old garden bed. So we kind of piled it up and we've overseeded it. We'll let the chickens work on those piles and then you can see what the grass was like out here before. It's just, I think it's centipede. Uh, over time, we'll allow them to destroy that. I'm not a big fan of centipede. But, so all of our uh, overseeding was focused on the garden soil and then over there where the garden beds are. I haven't overseeded anything in this area. I actually want them to obliterate it and take it down to the dirt get rid of it and then we'll work on adding something else and i've put access doors in on both ends fairly big door here i'm going to build so we can get a wheelbarrow in and out and on the other side a little bit smaller door it's 
probably hard to see, but it's right next to the chicken coop. I just wanted to be able to easily get in and out from both sides since I wouldn't want to have to be moving the portable fence that's in the middle just to get past it. And over here is the, the far end of the chicken run. And that's the composting operation we built a couple years ago to give them access to grass clippings. So in the summer, I, I bring fresh grass clippings in here and we throw our kitchen waste in and they go to town with it. And then we'll every so often haul out the compost and, and add more. And the girls think I have something for them. They always think we have something for them. These girls have been really good layers. We got them in right around the 1st of September. They started laying about a month ago. And 13 hens, we've been getting 12 or 13 eggs every day for the last couple weeks. They're really doing a good job. Our previous flock was what they called a rainbow layer package. So it was a lot of different breeds. And we rarely ever got an egg from everybody. Some of the breeds just didn't lay as well as others. But these, these girls are doing a really good job. And a couple of them are laying huge eggs, double yokers, quite often. So over there is the, what was the fish tank for the aquaponic system. I moved it all the way over here. But what we're planning to do is take this lower area below the chicken yard that used to be part of the garden and relocate the aquaponics system here. I'm still working on the design. I really would like to build something like that hoop house over it so we could ventilate it in the summer, heat it in the winter, and really try to get to, towards year-round production where the other system was capable of great production certain times of year, but not during the winter and then you had a problem with the fish because there were no plants so that's why this past november i moved all the fish out of the tank into the pond in the front yard so i'm really hoping to turn this into a year-round operation I, I haven't finalized the design i'll probably still do some some of those half barrel grow beds but because space is going to be more at a premium in a hoop house or greenhouse, I may look at more vertical production. Something like the zip grow towers I've seen on, the, on YouTube. But, but, you know, footprint wasn't really a problem when there was no hoop house over it, but it's going to be a much bigger issue. And I don't know if you can see that, but there are a couple of the reasons why we have to worry about protecting the chickens. There's three hawks circling overhead and this time of year there's not much to eat and those big fat chickens look really appetizing to them so over here just to give you an idea these wires were actually here they've been here for a couple years so you can see where the kiwi vines have grown out onto them so I'm expecting once I give the kiwi vines a better place to grow out that they'll, well, it won't take very long to cover this entire area. Uh, and it will be more than just those four wires you see. There's a crisscross between the four poles. I'll add four, four more so there'll be eight wires going out like, like pie slices. And then I'll run some wires around almost like a spider web just so... I don't think any hawk is going to fly down through a hole where it can barely get its wings through. Once the kiwi vines start growing into it, they won't be able to get in even if they wanted to. Here's a little bit better example, if you can see this, of the eight wires. I just need to run the wire around in a rough circle. Uh, I guess it would be an octagon. So... I'll do more videos in the future to show the progress, but probably going to let the chickens out. It might be two more months because we want some of the ground cover to get established before we let them at it. And I've still got some more work to do with the doors and the wires and 
it's just not worth risking it. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll update it more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. This is Jack from BCO Farm.